Welcome back to the world's best fitness, health, and fun podcast in the world. This is Mind Pump. We have a good time here. And we like to give free things away to our viewers because we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. So here's the giveaway today. MAPS Performance. Get free access to a program that teaches you how to train like an athlete so you can look and move like an athlete. You work in different planes of movement. You work on explosive power, speed, stability, and strength. Here's how you can enter to win free access to that amazing program. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and click on your notifications. If you do all those three things and if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Performance. Also, we are running a sale right now on that very program. So MAPS Performance is 50% off. We also have a 50% off sale on another program, MAPS Aesthetic. This one's more bodybuilder inspired. So it's like body sculpting, shaping, building, you know, train like a bodybuilder. That program is 50% off. So if you want to get either program or both, here's what you got to do. For MAPS Performance, go to mapsgreen.com. For MAPS Aesthetic, go to mapsblack.com. And then the 50% off code for both programs is FEB50, FEB50. You'll get half off either program or both programs. Totally up to you. All right, here comes the show. All right, the best fat-burning supplement by far is creatine. Oh, oh yeah. I Let's like I like that. Yes. I like that. Burning. I know yes. where you're going with that. It's true. So there's a huge market for fat-burning supplements, and they're largely made up of stimulant-based uh, products. And what stimulants do is they obviously make you feel hyped in the short well, term. What about my pyruvate, bro? Oh, God. Nobody talks about that yeah, anymore. Remember that back in the day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 they're they stimulants, so they get you kind of hyped up in the short term. In the long term, they don't because you start to your body starts to regulate, adjust, and adapt. But in the short term, you get this boost of energy, so it may make you move more. There's also appetite suppressing effects. So that's why sometimes fat burners in the short term can help people lose weight. But I'll argue in the long term, not so great because of the, the, the effect they have, the stress response they have in the body. They don't really contribute to muscle building um, for long-term health. Not really too many benefits. Creatine, on the other hand, never marketed as a fat burner. But we all know it's a clearly the most effective non-hormonal legal muscle building supplement you can take. So indirectly, you are going to burn more body fat in the long term with creatine because more muscle equals faster metabolism, and a faster metabolism is a wonderful thing to have when you're talking about I, fat I loss. I love, I love that. Good old recomp. No, I mean, not to mention it's probably significantly cheaper than a lot of those fat burning supplements. Yes, and mm -hmm. healthy. Yeah. And good for you. It's got great health properties it for the works. brain. It's good for the brain. It's got great properties for the heart. They're now starting to use it uh, with the aging population to prevent atrophy. Yeah. It's cognitive benefits, arthritis benefits, vegans. Yeah. It's it's a it's a great supplement. It's been around for a while. It's the most studied, one of the most studied supplements, <clears throat> and it's a indirectly it will help with fat burning. Just now, like resistance training is a great fat burning tool when it comes to exercise, even though it burns less calories than other forms of exercise, and it's all through that muscle building process. Now I want to tell you. What, so when I used to tell my clients to stay away from fat burners and that they're a waste of money. The thing that I would tell them is that they, they're a stimulant. And if you've ever felt yourself eat, you know, drink, you know, extra caffeine than, uh, uh, on a day or whatever with that, yeah. how, you know, antsy you are and how active you are. You yeah. just, you tend to get up more, or you're tapping your hands, you're doing stuff. And most of the studies and research around any of these fat burners that show any sort of positive benefits towards fat burning are directly connected to the just the, how much you move more. How because you, you are. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that not true? Or what that's, are, that's part I mean, of it. that and then the appetite suppressant? Appetite suppressant, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than that, like it, there's the, the other benefits that they try and tout are just not worth yeah, it. Yeah, they'll show studies like more, like more fat uh, mobilization and whatever. But when you look at the actual studies on fat loss, you do, in a short term, sometimes see an effect. In the long term, I don't think there's a great effect. In fact, in my experience with clients who did use fat burners, there was always a strong rebound, right? Because when you're on them for you know 10 to 12 weeks, you get this appetite-suppressing effect. You get this kind of hyper energy. Um, it starts to wear off. You're going to go off at some point because you can't just keep ramping up your stimulants uh, you know, forever. When you go off, now everything's down-regulated. You feel like crap. Appetite comes back you know, like crazy, and you and it tends to wash out. And I, I, I mean, I'm even talking about the the ones that were very that aren't even legal necessarily today, like ephedra, the ephedra caffeine aspirin stack of the '90s and early 2000s. I mean, that'll kick the crap out of most you know over the counter stimulants now, 
it had those effects, but in the long term, it wasn't very good. And oftentimes, what people would notice is maybe some muscle loss because of the stress response that it induces in the body mm -hmm. versus creatine, which you're healthier, you feel good, muscles are stronger, fuller, they recover right. faster, you build them faster, and then over time, you get this metabolism boost. I feel like uh, one to two reps, I've always feel like stronger when I'm running creatine. Like it just feels like I have like a little bit more in the tank, you know, in the workout. So it's like, you know, it has to benefit uh, your overall progress if you're yeah. really kind of Here's why creatine never gets marketed as a fat burner, <clears throat> because you gain a little weight when you go on it. Yeah, because it holds water in your muscle. Yes. So you yeah, so that's a terrible it's a vital way to part shoot. of performance. And we know that's gonna fuck with most people's heads, right? People totally. that get to say, Oh my God, I heard from Mind Pump that this is a great way to, to lose body fat and then they start taking it and they're like, Oh shit, my scale Heavier. went up two pounds and they freak yeah. out. Yes. They don't realize that yeah, okay, so your body's holding a little bit of water in your muscle. It doesn't mean that you got fatter. Yeah, and, and by the way, water in the muscle is not the same as bloat. So you can yeah. have water outside the muscle which is bloat and it makes your body look smoother. Water in the muscle is a more full looking muscle. It's a tighter muscle, not unlike a pump. Like when you get a pump, your muscles now have more fluid in them. You don't look like you're, you're fatter. Your muscles actually might look even more defined. So it's not a bloat on the outside of the body. It's intracellular, intramuscular They're more water. engorged. And it's a little yeah. bit. It's not much. I just wanted to say engorged. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I might gain with creatine. I'll tend my, my weight will go up like three, four pounds. Three to five pounds. And I have a lot That's of lean right. body mass. Yeah, yeah. With someone with less lean body mass, it's a pound or two. Yeah. But the fat burning effects over time, I don't think anything can really compare, you know, over the counter that you can find, especially when you look at the health effects. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to add to that and take it one step further. I, I would agree with you that I, I think creatine, creatine is a superior fat burning supplement for those reasons. And then I would even say the next, you know, series or types of supplements that would be even better than fat burners would be actually just assessing and seeing what nutrients you're lacking. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, are you, are you getting enough magnesium in your diet? Like, are you getting enough vitamin D? Are you getting enough vitamin yeah. D? Are you, are you missing in some of these vital nutrients uh, or are you low than uh -huh. lower than average and supplementing to get that up, I think makes your body run more optimally. Everything from sleep to energy to yeah. strength to just over over and over time, yeah. th those compounding effects will pay back more dividends towards fat loss than taking some bullshit T2 supplement or liposomal yeah. some shit. Like that stuff yeah. is like- Anything yeah. that's going to bring you back to a more healthy place, right? Like your, your healthy homeostasis where, uh, you know, after you're deficient, I mean, that's a great point. If you're um, you know, eating certain foods that are inflammatory and your body is just fighting this, you know, uh, internally as you're trying to progress and lose body fat, you know, you're going to have a hard time. So to, to be able to kind of figure all that out, much more effective than taking some uh, fat burning pills. Oh, yeah, oh I wish I understood that as a kid. Like, yes. that, like you know, the first, I remember as a, I spent so much money on, and when I didn't have very much money either, you know, I was making $5 an hour or whatever and a few hundred bucks a month and I'm spending 200 something on like muscle building supplements. Right mean, your bike because you have Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm not even tracking my protein and, you know, years later find out that I'm grossly under consuming protein simply just, you know, and that's, there's another supplement, right? There's that I would rather see someone take and that it includes for fat loss. Also, if you grossly under eat protein and you're a female or trying to lose weight, you getting your protein intake. I've had this conversation literally with my sister right now who wants to lose a bunch of weight. And she's like, want, she has all these questions. Should I take this and tell me the exact, I'm like, listen, all I want you to do is prove to me for two weeks that you can hit the protein intake I'm telling you to and watch how hard that is. And she's calling me every day going like, God, brother, it's really hard to do that yeah. consistently. I'm like, this is going to pay you back towards your fat loss goal more than anything else I can teach you. Just start with that. And then, and so and that's the very beginning is just getting her to eat, eat her protein. You're intake. right. It's similar to creatine, right? Because higher protein diet, so long as calories are controlled, right? It's an appetite suppressant, builds more muscle indirectly. You end up burning uh, more body fat. You know, with the nutrient deficiency thing, I'm glad you said that. That's a big one because if you have a legit nutrient deficiency, uh, your <clears throat> forget fat loss, your health is not good. Like if you're lacking vitamin D, or magnesium, or zinc, or any other essential nutrient, your rate of anxiety, depression, insomnia, your hormones are like low vitamin D in men, low testosterone, right? So nutrient deficiencies are, that's a medical issue. And there's almost nothing more impactful. And I've had a few clients like this where we were going down the list trying to figure out what the hell was going on. 
they got their nutrients tested, my B vitamins are low or whatever, supplementing with them, finding the right dose, and then it's like night and day, like complete night and day in terms of how they feel. Yeah. That's a really big one. Now, I know the next question is going to be like, what's the best form of creatine? Uh, creatine monohydrate. The cheap They're, one. That's it. <laughs> that's the one that's Yo, studied. No other form of creatine has been yeah. shown to be better. So you have to explain, Kate. Everything I, else is marketing, right? By, yes. Yeah. By this, and there's lots of it around creatine. And, yes. and it's and it's and it's continued to evolve and change. And I guarantee there's somebody on here right now that's probably shouting at their their phone or whatever like that. Whoa, what about this? Like <laughs> I've heard this. The delivery system on this is so I much. I work better. at GNC. Oh, yeah. Well, or that, or they sell yeah. a creatine that they and. The the reason why that has exploded all the different types and delivery systems is because the margins have gotten so shitty in creatine. Yeah. Creatine is so widely known. It's actually pretty easy to get. It's relatively inexpensive. And so it's no longer what we could make off of it in the you know late 90s and early 2000s. Now everybody can get it in bulk for really cheap. So we know the next way to get good margins at it is make it a, you know a delivery system that's different or pair it with something else mm -hmm. and sell it on why that is such a, a important this factor. This combo is the ultimate. Yeah, where it's splitting hairs. If you want to understand the supplement industry, read up on the history of creatine. It's a, it's a beautiful textbook example of how the supplement industry evolves and how they constantly shit the bed, right? So in the mid-90s, I don't remember the exact year, but in the it was sometime in the mid-90s, creatine became an available supplement. And it was a complete breakthrough because up until then, and even since then, no supplement has been shown to have the, the, those kinds of effects. There's all kinds of supplements, prom promising muscle building, all that stuff. Nothing actually works like creatine does. You take it and 90% of people that take it are going to notice an incredible effect. So in the mid '90s, I believe it was, and it was Bill Phillips' company, EAS, was one of the first ones to market it. This is no joke. So this is like '90, I want to say '95, '96, probably when I first started taking it. A 100 gram bottle of creatine monohydrate. So it was a small bottle, EAS, forty five dollars in the mid '90s. <laughs> it's how much it costs. Yeah. Or you could buy Phosphagain. This was a protein supplement with cro with yeah. creatine. Phosphagen IHP. Yeah. And then they started coming out with more, with, with different ones. <laughs> And they really, they really kind of own the market on creatine for a little yeah. while. And it's one of the main reasons why they completely exploded, besides yeah. the marketing brilliance of, of Bill Phillips, they exploded. And so what supplement companies did is they're like, okay, as creatine becomes more available, how the hell do we separate ourselves from our competitors? Because it's just all creatine. It's all yeah. the same. So they first started competing with delivery systems. So this company over here is like, Dextros, got to have Dextros. And then this mm -hmm. one over here, mm -hmm. you know, is, is talking about, oh, this other thing that you got to take with it and it's carnitine and it's whatever. So they started competing with that first. Then they came out with different versions of creatine. Creatine citrate, throw it in water, it fizzes up. This is better absorption. It's not, right? All these different forms coming out. This one prevents the bloat that comes from creatine because what they did is they worked off of the false myth around creatine causing bloat in, in a lot of people. And the truth is, they've studied all of them. None of them are more efficacious than creatine monohydrate. In fact, creatine monohydrate usually is the most efficacious one. At the very best, they're about the same if they have a different version. So there's nothing that's better. It's the most studied. It's also the least expensive. Yeah. So really, and, and powder. Just get creatine monohydrate powder, pure, plain powder. Yeah. It doesn't need to be micronized, although that's fine if it's easier for you to swallow than the gritty you know, powder. It doesn't need to be put in a tablet, but if you prefer it that way, you could take it that way. It's inexpensive. What you want is just something that's got third-party testing to make sure that it's pure because supplement companies can sometimes be dirty. Dust it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or just be dirty. Like you'll you'll have heavy metals or, or something like that in there. But that's pretty much it. And, and so they try to find ways to compete with each other by coming up with a new marketing angle and maybe it's a different, you know, we we bound it with an amino acid. We did this, we did that to increase it. None of it, none of it works. And by the way, I love that you use that as like, this is a great like history lesson for people around supplements yes. because protein has followed that same pattern. <laughs> yes. yeah. Pre-workouts had followed that same Very pattern. It's like we take a couple things that we learn that are, oh, this there's some value to this. Yeah. Like people should- How do you put a twist on it now? Yeah, now, now and, and then every, and the first few people that figure it out and sell it make millions and millions, sometimes probably billions of dollars. And then, then the market gets flooded with everybody trying to jump on it. Like, and then now it's like, okay, how do we separate and differentiate yeah. ourselves from the other, the guy next door who's selling the exact same product for about the same price or maybe even a little bit cheaper? I've got to throw some other things in it. I've got to sell the idea that that's so important. It's like, 
it's it's so one unfortunate. Of, one of my favorites. I never, I'll never forget this. I had a female trainer that worked for me, and I we were talking one day about supplements, and I was telling her about creatine, and she's like, "Okay, you know, I think I'll get some." And she comes in, and she's like, "I got creatine, but I got the one for women." I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> and she, I swear to God, it was what? this. I don't remember the name. I wish I knew the name because I'd love to make fun of this company. It was a pink bottle. Yeah, it's because it's pink, right? And it yeah, said creatine without the bloat. Shreds did that bullshit, yeah. dude. Wow. Creatine they without the, the bloat. They did, they did that for protein powder. Oh, Jesus, protein Jesus. powder for men, protein powder for oh, women. Here's oh a whole load of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And, okay, you know You're what? <laughs> you know what 99% of them do too, right? Because it, it's the same thing the multivitamin does. Yeah. And the, and the multivitamin- Throw a little iron. Iron, extra yeah. iron. <laughs> That's it. They yeah. put a little more iron in it, and then they throw Women it in a pink bleed label and say it's throw it, some iron yeah. In there. Yeah. yeah, that's exact. That's that's, a, that's all the have, difference yeah. of a, a woman's multivitamin, a men's multivitamin yeah. is a woman's multivitamin has a higher dose of iron inside of it. That is it. And then you do the same thing with a protein powder. It's like, oh, there's a protein powder for women. Why? Because we we bumped an extra 500 milligrams mm -hmm. of freaking iron inside there. Yeah. So now we say it's for women. Yeah, yeah. you know what they'll do in the men's one? Like men's multivitamin with you know lycopene for your prostate or some shit. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it, it's like, thanks. It's completely true. Plain powder, it, the bloat thing, that's a myth. Uh, if it causes digestive distress, that's different. Very small percentage of people might notice digestive issues with creatine, but it's very small. It's like less than 10%. Mm -hmm. You will gain a couple pounds. It's not body fat. It's literally intracellular, intramuscular water. That's a good thing. That's what you want. Uh, you will get stronger. You, you nailed it on the head, Justin. The average person... Uh, it's not it's not steroids. So you're not going like, to all of a sudden you know have these crazy gains, but you'll gain about five pounds or two reps on most of your lifts. I, that's a, I think that's a great that's way. Dude. Yeah. That, well, isn't what's happening? It, it's it's speeding up the the the, the way your body re replenishes ATP and ADP, and right? it causes and it, your body so, has more ATP. So I used to. I know this is not scientifically correct, but this is the way I would explain it to clients to get my point across is I'd say, imagine you have a hundred of these energy molecules, ADP and ATP, a hundred of them before you do your set. When you do your set, your body uses 20 of those. Mm -hmm. When you rest between sets, your body replenishes, let's say 15 to 18 of those. That's why as the workout goes on, you get a little weaker, a little weaker because it's, you know, you're, you're constantly depleting and then it's not quite replenishing all of it back. Yeah, he's a closer. When you're oh, on man. creatine, okay, oh, and by the way, it's on sale this month for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my book creatine. I like how you said there was no science. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish we had that right yeah, But by the by, you know, so then it replenishes. Okay, when you're on creatine, and I said that, you know, or without creatine, your body naturally replenishes on the rest period. I said 18 of those molecules. It now does 19, right? Yeah. Or 19 and a half or whatever. So it's, you know, as it depletes, it's just replenishing a little bit. That little bit more of energy per set the way it translates into one more rep yeah. or two more reps. Now the so. now the reality is it's more like you normally have a hundred of these ATP molecules and because you supplement with creatine you have 150. So okay. your your stores are higher. And because of the intracellular, intramuscular fluid or water, they believe that to be one of the reasons why you see faster recover and faster muscle growth. Mm. So you are stronger because you have more muscle energy and you do gain a little bit of water inside your muscles. But through that process, your muscles actually build faster over time. And creatine also is now being discovered. Well, not now being discovered. There's lots of studies that show this. But now you're going to start to see it get marketed as a health and wellness supplement, improving cognition, reducing mm -hmm. arthritis, you know, arthritic pain, uh, heart uh, health. Like this is a, a supplement that was ad advertised to hardcore bodybuilders, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, whatever. So yeah. Yeah. really exciting Pretty stuff. Trippy. Well, yeah. I know you've been, you were, did you talk about, uh, I know you've been doing this way. I brought it up on the last episode. You've been talking to some of our partners. I know um, Organifi has been one of the partners you're talking to. Did you guys even talk about potentially doing creatine or anything like that? I know they don't offer that Not yet. really. I can't really talk about what we discussed uh, in regards to, you know, you know, potentially creating new supplements uh, moving forward. You can't even hint for us, not even a little bit. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> it is a it's secret. A se man. We're we're trying to look at all the all the gray market stuff we could still throw in there. Before <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's still. I mean, at was, life. I'm was, just kidding. Was answer. creatine even on the table? Plague, was it something protein. you guys discussed at all, or no? No, not really. Um, we didn't talk about it. I like creatine a lot, but I also think it's ubiquitous. It's inexpensive, and I mean, yeah, you could do it, and yeah. you know, whatever. But we're not gonna get rich doing it. No, I mean, I I, I think exactly. I, and that's why they come up with so many different crazy, you know, types of creatine and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Speaking of Organifi, this is hilarious. So my cousins and uh, my friends, I'm in this big thread with my, a bunch of friends and cousins, okay? <laughs> is yeah, this the, I, the the body, lip, the one you guys are all starting your I competition? I saw a few of these inter interactions. Oh, bro, it's hilarious. So usually, it, so 
everybody in there except for me is a stockbroker or an investment banker. So nine out of ten, it's like Wolf of Wall Street kind of vibes. Not, and this is it's I love it because yeah. I get I don't need to do research. I get to go on there and watch these guys argue and debate each other and post shit and yeah. you know talk shit. And I get to learn about investments from these guys who do it. You know, all of them have been doing it for. 10, 15 years, and they're all really good, right? So usually it's a it's a it's filled with investment stuff, shit talking along those lines, like oh you you know the stock you picked, you only made this much, look how much, and it's great, that's a good time, right? <laughs> but the other day, they're on there, and my cousin Alex goes on there, and he goes, uh, and he starts to challenge, uh, you know, one of the, one of the guys in there for a weight loss challenge. Hey, let's see who can lose the most. I don't remember how it started. They were talking shit about how fat, you know, you're fat. No, you're fat, whatever. So <laughs> That's how it always starts. Oh, yeah. So is. then they get on there and they're like, yeah, well, let's do this weight loss challenge. How are we going to do it? This and that. So, of course, I'm waiting for them to call me in there. Okay. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, these fuckers, I've given them all workouts and nutrition advice 150,000 times. Yeah. All And just they've done, they've, they'll do it and then stop doing it. So I'm just annoyed at this point. Don't ask me for help anymore. Yeah. So, of course, I, sure enough, Sal, what's a good metric? How should we measure who wins? Like, what's going on? So, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm going to just, I'm going to let them have it. So, I said, you sure? You, I'm like, you sure you guys want to do this? Because it's going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make it ugly. I'm not going to be nice about this anymore. And I started <laughs> Now saying, you're in my world. <laughs> and, I, and I started telling I can't put too much in the stock conversation, but I got a lot no, of this. Yeah. Actually, the first hour was me arguing with them and saying, I'm not going to help you because you guys are failures. I'm uh, sorry. You guys fail all the take time. Take away clothes on them? Oh, yeah. bro. Uh, <laughs> you guys aren't ready. You're ripping not ready. them, right? Yeah. Remember, these are my family and close friends. So I'm just ripping them about it. And, you know, and they're like, what should we do? So finally, we agreed. And I said, okay, here's what you do. Take a picture now. Take a right, and you're gonna take the same picture again later. Take a picture now, post it, and then 90 days from now, take another picture, and then everybody in the group is gonna say who wins. And so we're gonna be able to make fun of each other the whole time. <laughs> so this is what they agreed on. So my buddy Eric is doing it. Dom, my buddy Dominic's doing it. My cousin Giuseppe is doing it. They're all kind of jumping in and doing this thing, talking hella shit. They're talking crap to my cousin, who's my age, right? Because yeah. a lot of these guys are younger. Oh, you're old now. You can't do that. So then I told my cousin, my cousin, I said, Sep, you know, it's him and I'm, him and I are real close. I'm like, you need to show these kids what time it is. Show yeah. them why they don't poke the old lion, you know? So yeah. he's all getting <laughs> hyped up. So do you know, like, each one of their strategies in terms of their their weight training and their nutrition? Well, wait, wait, how did that like, do with Organifi? Oh, no, yeah. I'm going to tell you. No, no. Oh, he's like, what does yeah, that no, have no. to do with Organifi? So then finally, finally <laughs> today. We're getting there. No, no, so <laughs> it's, we're getting there. So it's a so day. that was a terrible commercial. <laughs> I know. <laughs> No, no, you remind. So a day later, okay. right? So now this is just a bunch of shit talk. Finally, I get in after I tell them they're going to fail. I don't want to help them. Finally, I get in, and today I come in this morning, and I, I'm already talking shit. Like my cousin takes a picture of his bench, right? And I'm like, I don't see you on it because he's trying to show me he's working out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now they're taking pictures of the workouts. They're posting <laughs> pictures of their meals. What should I do? This and that. So I'm giving them like a list of things. I said, okay, I know what you're going to want to do. Because it's what you guys always fucking do, and I always tell you guys not to do this. Do not go and just go do a shit ton of cardio and just stop eating. Because you will 100% yeah, dude. rebound. You're not going to last. It's going to be terrible. You're Your lose average muscle. person, that's like the, the button just... Yeah, I'm like, here's what you do. So I'm giving them kind of examples of workouts, telling them with diet. I'm saying, don't get too crazy with your diet. Just stick to this kind of stuff here. And then they're like, supplements. What about supplements? Like, Try and get everything from food. And then I'm like, and, and look, if you guys want supplements, and I shouldn't have said this because I opened the floodgates, even though they're all wealthy as shit, they're all still, you know, do, do you they're all, our, they're do all you offer our protein powder? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's 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 the confession. So and, and they're all they're all children of immigrants, right? So they're all although they're all very wealthy and successful, uh, they'll they're all pass up free shit. Yeah, ever dude. <laughs> so I'm like, listen, you guys can come to Mind Pump headquarters. I said I got a whole back room. He'll full. drive all the way here, waste gas just to get a free. Oh yeah, dude. Protein from San powder, Francisco, yeah. from Why Sacramento. Why does that make sense? So I'm like, I got a whole back room full of like Organifi <clears throat> supplements. So I'm like, you know, here's what you can do. So now everybody's like, green juice, red juice. I'm going to take a protein powder. But I said, okay, it's going to help if you miss your targets with your food, but you got to do the food first. Yeah. But now they're jazzed, right? Yeah. Everybody wants to do the Organifi supplement stack, all that stuff. So I'll, I already, and I told them, but I got their permission because last time I brought them up on the show, I got a bunch of heat because everybody was like, don't talk about me on that, whatever. So I said, listen, I'm going to call you guys out on my show. That's why I said everybody's name. Put a little pressure on you guys. If you guys want free supplements, that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to give some updates that's now. That's the deal. I'm yeah. going to give updates now on, on what's going on. Yeah. So, But, I, you know, it's fun. This kind of shit's fun for me. 
I have a blast with it. Obviously, I'm working out this morning. I'm a little extra angry because it gets me in the mood to, yeah, you know, to kick ass or whatever. I'm sending pictures of the music I'm listening to, and they're like, "That's that's devil uh, music." You know, right? you know, it's funny. You're bringing up something that actually I was just talking to Katrina the other day about. Like, <clears throat> I'm having a really hard. There's something that I made a deal with myself that I was gonna, when, you know, when I reached this certain milestone, I was gonna reward myself, and I'm having a really hard time uh, buying it for myself. And I'm like, "What do you want to buy?" So it's a, it's a, it's like the it's the final watch that I I, I said. <laughs> Wait a minute, yeah. the, the final, final yeah yeah watch. the final one. It's right? like a boss. Yeah, it is. It's literally like the, it's like the one. It's like the I made it one, right? Yeah. The one that the, I, the one that I thought about. Achieved the underbosses. Yeah, I did. Go no, for the mega real boss. talk, right? And yeah. I'm having a really hard time. Katrina's it's like a time machine. She's watch. like, <laughs> why? What's wrong with you? She's like, why don't you? Why don't you deserve it? I, you, I think you should do it. And and I'm like, I don't. I just I'm struggling really bad with it. And the irony of this is, I'm watching the two of you guys, and we're this we're all kind of opposite here right now. Yeah. It's like. I, as I've gotten wealthier and as I've gotten older, I've become more and more of a miser about with spending yeah. money at all. And then I'm watching you over here who's like, hey, you'd be so proud of me yesterday. I've spent this on a bed and I, yeah. I got Jessica a purse. And like Justin's like, hey, you'd be proud of me the other day. Like I could have done this labor and work and I hired somebody else to do it. <laughs> yeah. So like that. Yeah. So you guys are going You've that way. You've had all the influence on us. I know. I'm going tuning. the other way right now. You know now. why? It's, uh, it's uh, kind of funny. You know what it is? It's uh, we're all getting a more healthy relationship with, uh, with money. Yeah. So, and you know, it's like balance. In both right? directions, right? It's balance. You guys are probably a little more on this extreme. We were two I was over probably here. a little more extreme and yeah. we're kind of- both. We're all coming in the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, it is that's what I, yeah. that's what I'm trying to like wrap my brain you around. Have, you have a lot of like you know really nice watches that are very that are value that are quite valuable. So I can get why you would be a little bit, you know. Yeah. So I'm I'm just well. It was really this was a uh, again a, a, a goal that I set a long time ago. Um and and thought okay if I if I get to this place this is when I'll reward me with this watch that I always wanted and you know I got there and what's I think what's eating away at me was. I was shopping it last year because I was already like, you know, I, I had a feeling like- Oh, I'm, let me guess. It's way more now. Bro, it's like- How much more? Yeah, it's gone up like $12,000 in just less, less than a year. It's gone up that much? Yes. Oh, See, that's and so, cool. You get something you really like and it's actually gaining value. Oh, dude. It was, well, I mean, that's what, so my, my old ones, I was showing Doug the other day because I finally- What does the watch do? Uh, what does it do? Yeah, it doesn't do for that. Much. What it that tells watch time, do? bro. It tells time. <laughs> what does watch do, Adam? What is it? I mean, uh, does it transport you or something? <laughs> it's, it's, dude, check out my watch. It's got a laser. Hey, I tell you what, though, you, you know, uh, because I was obviously uh, in the market and I've been looking, so I, I went down the rabbit hole of kind of like I, every once in a while, every couple of years, I check up on my. So I had I I had my first one in 2010. My second one was 2012. And so I, I pulled those up just to look, and I, I think I sent it over to Doug. I was Dude, show, they hold their, they they build value. Yeah. So I bought uh I bought that Daytona um back in 2010. That was my first one, and I bought that at eighteen five. You as long, as long as you have the box and papers, which of course I do for all of mine, uh, used worn that same exact model. I found it for the the high end was twenty nine, the low end was twenty five. Holy cow! Yeah. For, and that's used, right? Used, worn. I saw some people selling it with no no box, no papers, and still more than what I pay wow. for. So cool that you could, you know, have something like that that you could wear uh, for a long it's time. It's really the only, I guess, acceptable uh, jewelry for men, right? Like. I mean, women, women will wear. I would wear I'll well, be well, women will wear you know ring. diamond rings and, and, I mean, and necklaces. A, and if stuff. you're an yeah you know, athlete or a rapper, it's pretty common. Well, to that's what I mean. The I say earrings and the, and the necklaces with the yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it'd be funny. Not, <laughs> could you should imagine if I yeah. roll it? Hey, this is fucking. <laughs> what if I came? This in? is like a Adam, time capsule. A big old later, di diamond we, fucking yeah. Later, we just have like our whole entire arm is like covered with bracelets and like we look like Johnny Depp. I'm gonna come. And one day be like, you know, I didn't want to watch Adam, but check yeah. out my anklet. This thing's twenty five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> it's got rubies on. You know what though? In this in this uh, inflationary market that we've been in, you know, this these last couple of years. Uh, I mean, we're always in one, right? Whether it's two percent or seven percent or whatever that. But and yeah, seven percent. Yeah, 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 quote unquote, right? Uh, but I mean, I guess I understand a little more because I used to like really talk shit. About somebody that would have like a million dollars in jewelry, but shit, a million dollars in if if you bought a million dollars in jewelry just ten years ago, you're better off with that. If you had 
a million dollars in a savings account that was earning you two or three percent. Yeah, you'd be losing money. Yeah, you, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, I know. so I mean, how can I talk too much Crazy shit? The and economy. that's the same thing as like my watch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just it's just not my style to wear a big old. You know what's funny? You know, so when, <laughs> when we went to go buy the necklace, <laughs> <laughs> I can see you one of those big old chains. I know, dude. Maybe, like, maybe Andrew can put one right on here. Did you put one on me? Right here? Yeah, big it's, it's got to rotate though. I want one, I like. I want to make yeah, a diamond face of Sal that I would wear. Wow, you wore me on there. Wow, big old diamond face. Just rub it in. Yeah, hey, look at this, Sal. Go, go sleep. Sal's number one. Okay, hold on. That that totally segues me in. So, okay. um, so it, it was the funniest and like cutest thing ever, right? So your boy ever like comes up to me, and so he he just stops and he's like, "Dad, are you famous?" What? Uh, and I was like, "Oh, I mean, I don't think so, but you know, I appreciate that. Like, thank you, buddy. Like, where?" And and he asked me because he has a specific project at school. He has to like you know write about something and like have. But the qualifications are, you know, you have to have X amount of, um, I think it's like um, significance and like followers and whatever, but also have to have a book. And I was like, well, I mean, Sal has a book. And he's like, Sal's famous. And then he's <laughs> <No>. like, <laughs> so he's going to write a thing. He's going to write a like a moment for me. And Sal took it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sal. <laughs> No, I'm you know, just kidding. Yeah, is he going to yeah. write a report then on him, or was he going to do? I told him to, but I think he's, he's yeah, he's he's uh, not interested he's anymore. Be picking somebody else. <laughs> he's so, so he's like, like, no, I told him to. I'm like, sounds famous. Oh, <laughs> yeah. those qualifications. Because uh, you have to write it. That's so, hilarious. Okay, how, okay, so that's crazy, right? So kids now, when they do papers on that, the teachers now would because think about that for a second. That would never like we all did that. I did. I wrote papers on like famous people at one point okay. like, as uh-huh. a, as a kid. But obviously, this was before social media time. Oh, so, I know. That's why. Then, like, that's a qualification. Yeah, because you like, can't just pick some TikTok star. I think that's probably why they did it. Oh, oh, you mean with yeah. the book also? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, well, <laughs> you have to actually be tied to somewhat of like you went to school. I mean, you know, <laughs> is that what it is? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 Not just like the island so boys. <laughs> you can't just pick some <laughs> random dumbasses. Dude, my daughter, <laughs> that's so you remind me. I just forgot about it. My daughter comes home from school and she's like at this big smile. I'm like, what's so funny? And she goes, uh, I had my friends Google you the other day. And so, of course, what pops up are like some of my flexing pictures and shit. And her friends were like, that's your dad? And she's like, yeah, that's my yeah, dad. He's kind of my- strong. Yeah. yeah, My dad can beat up your dad. I'm like, you didn't say that. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I did. I'm like, oh, no. Like, it's okay. You can tell the truth. Imagine you get into like school dance. You get in a fight because of your daughter. Actually, <laughs> actually, one of the dads. Kick your dad's no, 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 I can't remember his name. I Damn, I feel like an asshole. One of the dads used to be a Greco-Roman alternate for the Olympics and fought as a pro MMA fighter. So it's like, I was like, don't tell her dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, he'll kick uh, my ass, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's a really... Let's not mess with that. Yeah, he's a really dude, speaking Dude, speaking of our kids, so uh, this happened yesterday at Max's school. Uh, Katrina called me on my way home and she's like, oh, guess what our son did today? I said, uh-oh, what happened? She goes, oh, I guess at that school, the uh, the teachers, he he was outside playing and uh, he's now at this age, right? So he, he uh, stuck his hand down his diaper and it was full of poop, and he brought, oh. he brought it to the teacher and said, "Poo poo." <laughs> Here's the <laughs> <You> know, evidence. <laughs> yeah, so. oh. And then he tried to like wipe his hand in the dirt to clean it, and they're like, "No, no, no." So it's like, <laughs> oh my god. So he's now okay. So the the phase I'm in right now oh, is yeah. um, he he will try and repeat almost everything I say, and maybe he hits you know it, at about. 30 percent to 50 percent mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying as far as the the, the being able to say it clearly uh, but he'll try so i can get him and say say light say book say door oh, and he and he's trying to say it you know and some of them like he like he doesn't do m's very well so certain letters he can do really good um but that's where he's at right now is he's putting together and so funny like because every once in a while he'll do something he was the other the other morning it was saturday morning where katrina and i were trying to sleep in and he he comes crawling up uh on the bed and uh, her and I are like, just, you know, give him, give him like the, give him the iPad for a little bit so we can sleep for another half hour or whatever. And he's like, he, he she tries to do it and he like he puts it aside. No. And he's like, and he taps on, wake up, wake up. You know? <laughs> so he can put like so randomly, he'll do that. Yeah. And then I try and get him to repeat it. He won't repeat it on command, but he's really starting to pick up everything that we're saying. Yeah. And then he'll just kind of randomly use it or say it. And sometimes it's like clear as day. Other mm. times you can't get him to say it. So you know what's really weird about that? So you know how kids will learn a word, but then they'll say it kind of weird. But you'll know because right. you'll know what they're trying to say. Right. And because you understand the English language. That's where he's at right now. Yeah, yeah. And some and you understand the English language. So certain words, even though they say them wrong, you kind of piece it together. Yeah. Okay, so... Jessica has been teaching uh, Aurelius sign language along with, you know, obviously English. Mm-hmm. 
and it's great because he it's like it's the it's the same thing as learning a new language, right? So he'll do a sign and then he'll try to say it sometimes or sometimes he'll just do the sign. But what he's done for the last like it's been like 4 or 5 weeks now. There's a sign that he does and we don't know what the hell he's trying to say. So so I'll show you what they are. So there's one for food which is this. Right. He puts yeah. his hands like this. Mm -hmm. This and then a, this is more. Yeah, that's more. And right. then this is outside. And then uh, there's a bunch of a bunch of other drink. Ones, but, right. Yeah. So and so, he'll come up to me. He'll look at me, and he'll do this. He'll do this with his hand. He'll go. So he just well, he put one finger on. Look at me like this. I'm like, what are you? What are you trying to say, buddy? <laughs> I'm like, what, Jessica? What's he trying to say? She's like, I don't Daddy's know. Daddy's talking too much. That's no, I think is. so. Yeah. yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. Yeah. I Be see quiet. Doug do it every once in a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. What's what's even what's hilarious? And yeah. now, okay, this, this fun, funny part of the story is we figured it out five weeks or four weeks later. But anyway, he'll mm -hmm. come up to me and he'll grab my face, like like look at me, Dad, and then you'll go. He'll do this. And I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to say. Yeah. So I'll just, uh, he must want something. So I'll just give him whatever. whatever. We figured out what he's trying to say. Mm. He's trying to say water. Oh, and oh, water cool. is, I can't remember the sign. It's like, it's like this, or I can't remember. There's like two fingers and you do this, but he doesn't do it right. Right. He just does this. Uh. So this, for like the last four weeks, oh, the poor, uh, we've been ignoring the poor kid. The and yeah. he's looking at us like, give me it's some like, fucking water, on, guys. <laughs> I'm doing the thing. Yeah. I'm like, you want more chicken? You know? He's like, no. You know? <laughs> you, you want more chicken? You're all telling him a story, and he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one. <laughs> what is that? It's a lyric." <laughs> when my when my brother was little, he said, uh, "Fire truck." He said, "Fire fuck." So of course, <laughs> yeah. what do you think I made him say all the time? I know, uh, all the time. That's There's, around the corner for me right now. I can tell. I can tell we're right at it around the corner with like, and well, even Katrina because she well, she swore the other day, and she's like, "Oh, you know what? We got to be careful now. This is the time." He's he's trying to say everything we're saying, and so if we say something around him, he, we're gonna he's gonna repeat it. So that's what we're entering in right now. So he's he's fun, man. Right just now, just wait, a, dude. A really cool, because a really what cool the challenge time. is when they say something like inappropriate, you can't laugh or make a big deal. Yeah. Because then they just say it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just gotta act like nothing. <laughs> you get excited and yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's like that story. Okay, like so when when Courtney was we were up in uh, Tahoe, I believe, with our event that we were throwing, and she was there uh, with the kids, and they're talking. To, like you remember, I told this story about uh, her. Um, um, basically talking about, um, um, I think like noises in the house, like Ethan like comes out and is like, yeah, there's oh, like yeah. noises going on in the house. Like, like at certain times of the night, you know, I hear these squeaking <laughs> and, and daddy and pounding mommy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then and he's like, it's like, uh, uh. and like everybody just lost their shit. Right. And so he's just like, he's like, he's excited. That was a he's dinner. Like, uh, uh, and he like got like crazy with it. That yeah. was Everybody's just dying. He did that. So this was one of the first times. He's like, it only happens for 10 seconds. <laughs> we went, remember when we went to uh, Olympic village, right? When we went up to Squaw Valley, like years ago, that was okay. like, four, this was like four or five years ago. It was like the first time Courtney was hanging out with Katrina and all her family. Uh, yeah. So Larry was there, Katrina, Katrina's mom, and they were all having dinner. Yes. And he, it was Everett, right? Was it Everett or no, Ethan? No, it was Ethan. Oh, believe, Ethan. Yeah. Ethan's telling the story to everybody at dinner. Yes, that's what Not was knowing yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And Justin and Courtney are like... Yeah, just like, like, first time hanging out with all Katrina's family, uh, stuff like that. And Courtney was so embarrassed. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It's so, right, right. It's oh, so great. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> he did some... Man, last night, I melted my heart, dude. Like, so, right now, I've told you guys, like, he... He, we have the the little like um, outside lock on the door, so and he and we can see him through the camera and like you know every once in a while you put him down and he'll get up, he'll walk over, he'll check the door, and we can now do this like Max, get back in bed. Yeah. Well, after last night was one of those nights, and it's not normal that he'll do that like three or four, normally he does it one time. We tell him and then yeah. like he's out. Every once in a while he'll do it multiple times, and normally when he does it multiple times, something's up. Either maybe he went to the bathroom in his diaper or he's not feeling good or something. And so he had, last night it was a couple times like that. I thought I'll go in there, hon. I'll, I'll go. I'll go check on him. And I go walking in there, and he's. I right, open the door, and it's always so so cute and funny because he knows he's not supposed to be up. And I always open the door, and he, you know, he kind of looks at me, and then he he puts his head down, and then he like puts his hand his hand out to grab my hand, and why? And we know we walk back to bed, and then mm. I put him back there, and we go walking back. But this time he stops, and he he looks at the rocking chair, and he sit down, 
sit down. Oh, no. And he wants How me to sit cute. down. And he sits down and he climbs up at me and then he like nuzzles his head into my shoulder. I'm like, oh, you got, oh, he got you. Yeah, you yeah. got me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since like he's at that age now yeah. where I don't rock him. I used to rock him to sleep all the time. Well, that's been gone now for almost a year, right? Oh. So he's. Do like, you get it now when yeah. you see old pictures of him already where you, it makes you emotional? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was. Because it's like that that version of him is not, it's gone. Well, the side yeah. that I remember I used to say how much it drove me crazy that I had to lay around all day and watch TV with him stuff. But then there's the other side of that that was so great. Like it, I remember during football, like football season this year was different than football season that year yeah. as he would sleep on me. I'd watch the games on the couch and he'd just sleep on my chest the whole time and it would be wake up, get fed, back on my chest. Dad watches football. Or now, like I can't get him to sit and watch football oh, with me. Man. He's playing his toys, so I no. miss all that. stuff. No, Aurelius is this thing right now where he gets he'll get super frustrated, and if I try to do something, he'll like try to squeeze my face just instinctively, like he's upset. And then I'll look and I'll be like, "Ow!" And then he'll look at me and he'll grab my face like this, and he goes, "Papa." And then he kisses me. Like, oh man! <laughs> now, are you do, do you, it again? Do you and, and do you guys do this too? I'm curious. Do you guys like when you guys see things in the kid, like point out who he gets it from? You know, like oh, that's definitely from you. Oh, you know, you, yeah. that behavior or that thing that he's doing, that's definitely from you guys. Do you, yeah. you and Jessica do that? Do you guys go back um, and forth yet with Aurelius like that? Not too much, not yet. Um, he, you know, why? Because the when he's young, he likes to talk. He's very affectionate. He likes to hug. And get, that's both of us. So, so far, there's not like, you know, something that's really sticking out mm -hmm. because those things are, I mean, Jessica and I are both very verbal. We're both super empathetic and loving and hugging and kissing. And, all that stuff. and that's him right now. He just like wants he's, to go. he is just like me in the mornings. Like his, the way he oh, is, bad mood. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he don't like to be fucked with for the first half hour. Or so like he is the uh -huh. easiest, uh -huh. best, like loving, sweet kid ever. But the, he has his, and I feel like I'm the same way. I'm a very easygoing guy, all this stuff. But there's a few things that like, just don't fuck that up for me. Like just leave right. me alone. And he is exactly like that. It doesn't matter. It, 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 great sleep doesn't matter if it was terrible sleep where we're at like just the morning I learned time that, i learned that on one of our first trips when i woke up and did what i always do to fuck with people and i was playing loud ass metal music that'll be hilarious <laughs> and adam walks out and he, i look like i ruined your whole day and i remember yes. being like oh shit i'm about not. to fight you dude. you're so mad <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, i'm sorry man no, it's no, my, it's i'm my... the same you don't fuck with me when i'm trying to sleep yeah, yeah. and he's like that he's like and this right, that's like my one button and once once i warm up i have my cup of coffee and I'm, it's been about a half hour 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 then i'm like the happiest guy in the world right and he is just like that it's like you just gotta let him slowly wake up yeah and then he's cool i feel like you're either one or the other uh you're either like the wake up super energy turn the lights on real quick bright let's do this or you're that person yep. and they always marry each other i feel like that's always <laughs> yeah, what ends up happening yeah. you know what i mean i don't yeah. know Courtney's just like me so, oh is she really uh, yeah, yeah, yeah oh you guys so, are both like that she's then. not a morning person either. so are the boys like that did they both end up at that same kind they're of starting well if the, beforehand they were like they would get up first thing and they're like ready to go and now ethan for sure is like the preteen kind of oh like, bro you know just like i can't i have to literally go in there and like rip the sheets and like pull them out you know so. oh just wait i remember when i was a teenager Teenage, you know, when I was in my teenage years, I used to be able to sleep in if I wanted to, yeah, like, to like 11 noon. Yeah, or noon. noon. Dude, I used to sleep in two on weekends. No way I could do that no. now. Yeah. No. I if know. I sleep until noon now, there's something very seriously wrong with my health. When I was a teenager, <laughs> yeah. now it didn't happen very often because nine out of 10 times my dad would do this. He didn't knock. My dad never knocked. Open the door full blast and this is exactly what he would do. So I'll go mow the lawn and he'd walk out. And I'd be like, oh, <sighs> Fuck, I gotta, and he would just leave. Like yeah. he didn't. I couldn't say shit back. I had to get up, mow the lawn, six a.m. Okay, <laughs> oh dude, that's. Oh, I'll dude. go do it. Uh, I don't want to get. You know, you know I meant. To, I, just, I looked up. I saw that we had a Viore commercial today too. And I don't. Did you guys get uh, Jerry over the sizes for the girls? Yeah, yeah, okay. for, yeah, for, yeah, for okay. Valentine's. Yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I want to make nice sure that we tradition. Everyone we're starting do that. that. Yeah, yeah. By the way, covers I, my ass. I've gotten. I've gotten um, compliments on. Viore more than any other piece of article of clothing they've ever worn from peep from random people. Maybe because it's the nicest stuff that you wear on a regular basis. I didn't even piece that. It's real, it's a real huge <laughs> step up, dude. I mean, yeah. My, yeah. my family like, appreciate it when my you family's wear it. like you got to say something nice to him right now because uh, he's actually doing something that looks uh, all right. <laughs> no, people are no. I, people will ask me where'd you get that? That looks really good or whatever. Jessica really likes it too. She thinks it's very handsome. That's leisure wear. She's like you <laughs> know she says it. with your. She goes with your with your like your your silver hair. And you're wearing your athleisure wear. You just look like a really sexy, older, fit guy. That's Sporty what she says. dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I just love it. It's so weird that I'm, I I could wear like khaki or like slack type pants. Mm -hmm. And I'm like squatting in it, you know? And then I'm like ev doing everything in the same pants. I mean, it's a beautiful thing for me. I don't have to change. Well, isn't it wild that wasn't even a, a, a space? Like just, I don't know, what? 
when it, when did Lulu hit the scene? Because they were the first to like kind of really break. break That's been the, around for a little while, but it wasn't like men were like less than twenty, I was less never than 20 years. Lulu dude, your Lemon, options. Dude. Lulu a, came around when we were we were trainers before Lulu hit the market. Because I remember vividly when it hit the market, and it I think we all thing. remember vividly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Two thousand. 2000. Mm. Okay, so and then yeah, they so. had the the mishap where it was like the see through. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> that's uh, like, you guys change that. Oh. Yeah. But I mean, wrong? but I mean, the, your only options as a man before were you, you wear sweats, and if you're not in the gym, you look like a bum. Yeah. Like, well, you, oh, you, there's that guy. It's unemployed. Well, it's interesting. It, you know, talk about a, a shift, a total shift in culture that caused a completely new market Massive. to open up. It was just, I mean, just think about this. In the 50s, it would be so unacceptable to wear something that was like spandex at right. all in the day. Like people, yeah. men yeah. wore suits and women wore dresses all the time. Yeah. Like that was like normal attire. It just wouldn't be socially accepted where now it's totally socially acceptable to be in this kind of athleisure wear, this, this space. Yep. And it's, it's a shift in the culture. Massive. You can wear thongs on the street. Like it's, that's where we're at. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's be honest. I think you where can't you wear live, bro? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I want to get I've a house on it. your block. Come on. You guys don't watch influencers in the wild. It's everywhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> I found I that page that. to do before I had 10,000 followers. I know. And that thing, yeah. I knew it was going to be. I was like, I why didn't I think of this? This is such a it's brilliant, brilliant concept, and people are going to provide you content all day long. I like, know. It's wonderful. It's so good. All right. I want to bring up a couple studies for you guys because I want to throw these in. I don't, I don't want to miss these. So interesting study came out on uh, THC, the, the, the major cannabinoid in marijuana, and monkeys and testosterone production and testicular size. So they gave monkeys THC, and over time they found reductions in the size of their testicles and lower production of testosterone. Dang. It's another animal study showing chronic use of THC can lower testosterone affect the endocrine system. Gives you BBs. Yes. So, And I know people are like, oh, it doesn't affect testosterone. I don't believe that. I know if I use too much in the past, I could... Hell, so I that agree, would I agree with you. Effects. Although I went down the rabbit hole of like this because it was kind of making me worried. Because I, I, out of all of us, I obviously, uh, admittedly, smoked the most weed. And I remember when I was, I was starting to get like the gyno flare up when I was, and I couldn't figure it out, like what's going on. And then I think you and I were talking about it. So then I was like, oh wow, they could marijuana is. Mm -hmm. is Having one of my friends who's a chronic uh, marijuana smoker. Really? Yeah, he had gyno and he had no idea where he, you know, you got it from. And I'm just like, dude, I'm pretty sure it's the weed. Well, what I started to notice was, you know, if I, <clears throat> if I was taking like breaks like where i wasn't having it every single night and i wasn't smoking like heavy it was like oh like my i would say that my normal cadence of smoking is eh, every other night or so and i a couple puffs right before bed and that's kind of but there's been times in my life where i've been smoking like a half a joint before right. bed you know or something like that which is a lot for me right and when it was during those times was when i was doing that just by me scaling back so my where i'm heading with like when i started diving deeper is um I also see or saw that it, when you when you scale back or stop, it comes right back. Mm. So it's when you're in the when you're in the yes. thick of it. Yes, you it has those side effects, yep. but take it out and then right away it rebounds. Correct, so, absolutely, okay. yeah, because the the um, reproductive system is chock full of cannabinoid receptors, and THC <clears throat> has an interesting effect on them, and so this is like kind of hormonal effects that you notice. So. Lots of weed can cause some, you know, detrimental effects on your hormones. Now, it's not so the same as something like CBD. CBD is very interesting, right? CBD and other cannabinoids don't hammer the CB1 and CBT receptors like THC and doesn't does. Doesn't it actually mitigate some of that um, with THC in it, terms of the memory side loss? Effects? Yeah, it helps with the memory loss. THC combined with CBD, less memory loss effects. And it's a one-to-one, one, right? Isn't that what the ratio? Usually is what they'll find, or less anxiety or paranoia effects. Yeah. yeah, but this is another reason, another reason why I always like to take like a, a break for a little bit after I've been consistent. I just smoking. notice negative effects. It just stops feeling as, well, I, as effective. I mean, save, you save money that way too. I mean, yeah. if you yeah. all you have to do is take a break for a week off of using cannabis and it feel, your tolerance goes yep. back down and it's like, oh my God, it feels like it's the first time I ever had this stuff. And so for for that reason, I think it's worth it. And then, of course, for the, the compounding effects it probably has on your, your hormone levels, it makes totally. sense, too. One more study before we, uh, we we sign off here with this intro. Did you guys see the John Hopkins study that is going is circulating right now and going insane? 
Causing no. so much controversy? Yeah. No, because, I mean, originally there was one about COVID that was like- it's exactly what we fucking said. Brushed right, right under the rug. Exactly and I was what like, we John said Hopkins is, yes. over a year ago that there was going to be unintended consequences and we have to really ask ourselves the okay, percentage of me, potential dude. lives we're saving we, isn't worth please. what we're we trading it for. We said this from day one. Go back and listen to the podcast that, <clears throat> that the best thing you could possibly do in a situation like this is inform people- and allow free people to take the their own risks and, and chances themselves, which means you can either A, say, if you own a business, you can't come in unless you're vaccinated, or you can say, come in if you're if you're not or you are, doesn't matter. You allow free people to make those choices. You'll have far less unintended That's consequences. Right. If, you're really, if you're really scared, you're a super high-risk person, get all the vaccines, get the boosters, stay in your house as much as possible, wear your mask everywhere you go, smart strategy. Yeah, and so, and, and so right. the, the numbers are out. So the numbers are actually out, and we were 100%. Correct. So this is a this is a meta analysis. So this is an analysis of many many studies. By the way, they looked at tons of studies and only qualified I think twenty four. So these were like the best twenty four studies. And what they found was the the effects on mortality of COVID were insignificant between states and areas with heavy lockdowns and heavy handed approaches, mm -hmm. and those where there were a much looser approach to to COVID. So, however. The study also found severe unintended consequences, both economic and mental and emotional effects, things like depression, mm -hmm. you know, overdoses, domestic abuse, and of course, economic issues, which can lead to all those different things. So, Not to mention, too, that we are- I hope this is the nail in the coffin. That's what, and, I, that's what I hope. Yeah. Yes. Also, the children and, and their that's education. That's where I was just going to say is oh. like, we traded, we traded a senior population that we were trying to save and potentially did more damage to the future generation We're going to still up. see the damage that that caused. You know, no, 100%. We yeah, don't, we're going to see, we're, it's, we don't even know. We can't even calculate the dramatic effect yeah we literally we'll, caught we'll trace it back i'll guarantee yeah. it and i want to be very clear covid would have affected things anyway uh but not nearly to this effect what you saw yeah. in in the places with the most heavy-handed approaches was a huge it's just so funny too because the very people that supported these crazy uh measures yeah. are the very people that are like we need to fix the the you know the income gap and we you know what we did with this is we destroyed, we took the market and destroyed small businesses and gave that market share to big businesses. Yep, yep. So Walmart and mm. Amazon and yep. Target made way the more irony, money. irony, right? Like, I yeah. hate monopolies. I hate, you know, the, the same people like <laughs> cracked down so hard, destroyed all like small business with their ideas. Totally. Yeah. And it had little to no effect except for the, the negative unattended consequence. So I really hope this is the nail in the coffin for this type of policy. By the way, China which is has way more control over the people, has way more crazy draconian policies. So they mm -hmm. can literally, and they literally are, by the way, locking people in yeah. their homes. They can lock them up and not let them out. Not let them out. They'll tell people, if you test positive, you have to stay in here for two weeks. You have to do this. <clears throat> You're not allowed to do anything. They still have COVID. It's still, people are still getting. And what are the consequences of that? Would you want to live in a place where, oh, you know, we, we decreased our COVID by 50%, but- It's, it's a prison that it's they're a, living in. It's a prison and it's a, it's a ridiculous approach. And I'm, I hope nobody in the future supports this bullshit again, because it, it's we have the evidence now. Thank God. So there's the numbers. There you go. Well, speaking of numbers, I wanted to bring something up that I read this morning that I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, we've and because it's something that we've talked about quite a bit, which is the streaming wars, right? We talk all mm -hmm. about you know what companies are are leading, and is there going to be a dominant one? Are they all going to be around? And you know, when we have that conversation, we don't include. Uh, YouTube in that as we don't think of them as like oh, a, a, a streaming service yeah. and this is an art Let me read this short little bit from the article. I was reading. I think this is in the hustle I think I was reading uh, and I thought this was really interesting. So Google acquired YouTube for 1.65 billion in 2006 But didn't break out earnings for the streaming service until 2020 for the latest quarter YouTube ads brought in 8.6 billion dollars. Wow. Here's the wild part. That's an annualized run rate of 34 billion, which outpaced Netflix at 30 billion run rate for the first time. Oh my god. With a mostly ad ba uh, ad based business, YouTube is usually left out of the streaming subscription wars, but the conversation but it's clearly they are the video leader. As one point comparison, a study at, uh, of Android users found that 2020, the uh, in 2020, the average monthly time spent on YouTube was 23 hours versus six hours for Netflix. 
Well, you know, you know what it is. Here you have a largely free service. There, you could pay for YouTube Red, but most of it's free. Yeah, it's much more decentralized than what you'd see on Netflix or anything else because it's you produce your own content, put it up there. There's tons of available content. It's used by way more people, and don't forget this: Google. Uh, works very closely with YouTube. So when you search on Google, YouTube things pop up all oh, the time. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. you, uh, they, how crazy is it? Let's talk about Google, right? I wish they were cheaper. I'd, I'd love to buy a lot of Google. Google is a money printing machine. I mean, they they own Google the owns number the inter one the entire internet. and number two yeah. search engines. Yeah. I mean, with, with Google search and then with the YouTube mm -hmm. channel, they just... So anything and everything, everybody, they, you're trafficking through Google. It's, it's not to mention, too... Netflix, in order to to generate that thirty something billion dollars a year, they're spending a tremendous to produce and yeah buy, to produce yeah. and to make and to be one of the leaders in content mm -hmm. producers. Where YouTube is allowing others to do it yeah. for them to generate like that. Brilliant. So if they, it's it, you know I talked about before that I believe that we're going to see a, a monster come swoop up or gobble up uh, a handful or most of these like. Talk about their, them being one of the best positions to potentially do that with the amount of revenue and money they have they're already generating and the viewers they have. They're, the only person who has more eyeballs and attention is Facebook, but it's like neck and neck with, with YouTube. Wow. So the power that they have is is. You want to know what's funny? I remember uh, when, you, when YouTube was young, I would go on there and look at like fitness people. And I remember thinking to myself like, God, I wonder if I should get on YouTube. It was a long time ago. And there were like, one, like it was one guy, Scooby, I think was his name. He had the top YouTube <laughs> channel. There was like another guy, Mike. That Chang. Asian guy, the uh, yeah, six yeah, pack Mike abs. These guys became millionaires largely because there was no competition. So they put up their videos, oh, yeah, yeah. and there was an easy market for them. Obviously, they couldn't do it now because now it's so competitive. Yeah. But I remember thinking to myself, oh, I should do this, but I don't know how to do it. So I, do, so I never did. <laughs> yeah. I know, totally could have. I would have crushed Scooby. Hey, you got to go check out one of our favorite sponsors. LMNT. They make electrolyte powders with an appropriate amount of sodium, Okay, because most electrolyte powders don't have enough sodium to make a difference. These ones actually do. Of course, they taste delicious. There's no artificial sweeteners or anything in them. They have flavors like watermelon and raspberry and citrus. I love them. You get better pumps in your workouts, no joke, better performance. I was skeptical at first. I've talked about this on numerous podcasts. I love their products so much that Mind Pump actually invested in the company. This is 100% true. That's how much we like LMNT. Anyhow, there's a discounted hookup for you listeners right now. So here's what you can do. You can actually get a free sample pack. So you don't believe me? Try it out for free. That's what you can do right now. All you got to do is head over to mindpumppartners.com. Go to LMNT. Click on the link, and you can get an eight-packet sample pack from LMNT. So go try it out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from uh, from Shantanu K. Desai. What training frequencies should be applied towards stomach vacuums? Can they be done daily, or should there be a few rest days in between? Oh, good old good old fashioned stomach bodybuilder exercise. So vacuum. daily. Most. First of all, the vacuum is a great way to train the the TVA, the transverse abdominis. It's the muscle that sucks in the waist. It's actually one of the few exercises that'll actually shrink your waist if you get those muscles tighter and stronger. And it's like the body's weight belt. Um, so it's an important muscle to train, especially for uh, postpartum women yes. after having a baby. But it's it's important for everybody. Uh, because it's minimal resistance, because it's not a heavily loaded exercise, you have to create the tension yourself when you do it. It doesn't create a lot of damage, and you can practice them every single day. And what will happen over time is you'll get stronger and better at doing them. Yeah. So when you first start them, you may feel a disconnect. It may feel kind of weird. But over time, you'll get stronger and stronger and be able to generate uh, more force with them. But this is one of those few exercises. Go ahead and practice them on a daily basis. It's, that's always how I recommend it. Well, wouldn't you say like training the TVA, That's you're you're really looking for um, the ability for you to be able to draw that in, draw that in almost subconsciously, right? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to build or bulk or like add I don't think it. you could with the vacuum. Right. right. That's what I'm, so that's what yeah. I'm saying is like, so this is what the, the more you do that, uh, the more it becomes like a regular habit for you that yeah. when you yeah. walk around, when you bend over doing things. like a natural weight belt. Yeah, you're, you're naturally kind of drawn in and, and comfortable. I, th I actually think that when, it, when I was uh, training for the shows and stuff, like I obviously because of my stage posing and stuff, I was practicing kind of doing that all the time. Time, I never felt so good, like as far as like my low back support yeah. and then my posture. I started to, I could tell I was carrying my posture walking around just 
more upright than I ever did because of how much practice I was putting into to that drawing maneuver. That's the most I ever. Yeah. I never have cared enough to actually apply that consistently. But when I had to, because I was practicing posing so much, I got to a place where I could tell that I was naturally. And I can already tell since I haven't trained it like that frequently again. I I have to more. I have to be more uh, actively thinking about. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm slouching or I'm not drawing in. Where I kind of have felt that I was like holding myself that way all the time when yeah, I was practicing. At, at what point did it fall out of favor in like the bodybuilding community? Because that's really where. It so you know, it did, from. and then it's making its way back, right? right so right. ever since the the reintroduction of uh, classic. Uh, physique that category uh, which is only like because the vacuum pose the, it's an old school bodybuilding pose you see frank right Payne where you get it. to see the ribs and everything and it's yeah really so tight. it's almost like an ab pose with the hands behind the head but rather than flexing the abs they would draw in with the tva and create this like is it, super is small waist look frank zane the one who's most famous for doing it yeah but they all did it, it was like i mean they all did but yeah. he's like most famous for that right yeah he had so, that one behind the head and but he, now you just see the turtle shell ab you know where it's so i think distended. that's why it kind of fell out of favor right they stopped doing it because everybody had pretty shitty midsections and now that new category is open. And I think, what, what do you think Classic's been around? Four or five years? I think so. It's only been about four or five it's years. It's already that, bringing in more money than traditional. Do you know that? Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Wow. It's it's a more, I mean- and Realistic. I, I say, yeah, it, with quotations because they're more, still More desirable physique? Yeah, they're not like so freaky looking and it's kind of harks back to the, harkens back to the old days of bodybuilding. Yeah. But yeah, it was a pose. And so people practice it and you can get better at it where you really draw in and tighten that muscle. It's extremely valuable for postpartum women. Extremely yeah. valuable because yeah. that muscle atrophies in order to make room for baby. And I remember I'd get clients postpartum and I'd say, okay, we're going to try and strengthen your TVA. And I'd have them, you know, you want to be on your hands and knees if you want a little bit of resistance from gravity. I would place my finger on their belly button and I'd say, now draw it in. And they would always be shocked that they couldn't because yeah. they lost total connection to that muscle. Yeah. And then at through practice, they were able to, to do it and it totally works. And what you'll find is if if this muscle lacks, I guess, strength and uh, instability, as you do vacuums, you'll lose like a half an inch, maybe an inch around your waist without getting in a leaner. It'll it'll make your waist smaller just because this muscle is doing more of its job. Next question is from Daniel James. For beginning lifters, how do we figure out how much weight to start on main lifts? I did a, vi I did a video on this. Yeah, you mm -hmm. did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the best video quality. It was a while back when we did this, but um, I don't know. It's it's the best way I've ever been able to explain to somebody because it's, 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 not, it's not like a straightforward formula. Like, oh, if you're a new lifter, plug in. 10 times your, you know, this minus your body weight. It's like, there's not you like can't. this yeah. perfect formula. You got to kind of figure it out. Way through it, yeah. And I think the, the biggest mistake made is people grabbing a weight they can quote unquote do, but they don't do with like perfect form. Yep, I agree. And so, you know, I, I'm always telling a client like, yeah, we want to do the most weight we can and be able to maintain perfect form through whatever the desired reps Which are. Which is so, usually pretty light for a beginner. Right. So if it's, 10 reps, I want to be able to perform, barely be able to perform mm -hmm. 10, 10 reps, not barely be able to perform 10 reps at all. I mean, with perfect form. So that means I probably could do 12 to 15 reps, no problem, but I'd have to rock. I mean, if we're talking about bicep curls, right? Rock my shoulders or my elbows or arch my back to get up those last three. Like yep. if you have to break form at all and you, before you get to the rep range, it's too heavy. You yeah. back off. Yep. If you can do all 10 reps with perfect form and it's not hard at all, then you need to go a little bit heavier. And so that's what you're looking for. This is something I've been working through with the high school kids uh, because it's it's really testing me in terms of like, um, you know, answering a lot of their questions because they, they're they just not familiar with weight training like they should be. Uh, and so to pick weights, it's like trying to describe like you want to have each rep needs to be quality reps. So each one has to, you have to be able to do like maintain composure, maintain control of your body and work through each one of those without, you know, wavering at all. Uh, and if you can't, you got to go replace those weights and, and go down a bit. And so they're just like looking at me like dumbfounded. Like it's, it's about like always lifting more. Yeah. yeah as, as a beginner, especially you're better off erring on the side of lighter. Always. So right, because you can always yeah. you always progress. Later. And you're a beginner anyway. I'm going to tell you something right now. You if have you, something to build on. Yeah. And if you're, de if you're deconditioned, you don't work out and you go to the gym and you're like, I'm going to try doing squats. You do body weight squats, It'll which is more than you do every day. <laughs> yeah. You've actually sent a muscle building signal. That's and you right. might actually even get sore from doing just body weight squats. I remember back in the day as an early trainer not realizing that. I'd take a beginner and I'd push him 
through a crazy workout. And then, of course, I'd get the phone call. Uh, I couldn't walk for you know five days or whatever. But it, that was way overdoing it, and it only slowed their progress. Air on the, especially when you're a beginner. Perfect form is more important than intensity. Air on the side of lighter. You'll still improve. You'll still get stronger. If you do the opposite, air on the side of heavier and sacrifice form, you'll actually slow your progress down. Well, and listen, anytime that we talk about things like this where there's a video that we've already created that's specific to this, all you have to do is check show notes. So I know we get a lot of these questions and then people are, oh, I can't find it. It's like, check the show notes. It's mindpumppodcast.com where you can find the show notes. Yeah, yes. or it's down in the description of the link right if you're watching this on YouTube. Exactly. Next question is from Lazy Lazier. Will consuming all my calories in one meal a day and not eating for six to eight hours after workout limit progress and or ruin my metabolism? I'm currently 5'6", 153 pounds, eating 2,600 plus or minus 200 calories, trying to recompose and maintain naturally skinny. Yeah, okay, so I don't understand what, what he meant by maintaining naturally skinny, but okay, so let's, <laughs> let's go back here for a second. Technically, um, I mean, maybe a little bit, uh, you're not going to build as much muscle. Maybe studies show that you probably want a protein feeding every four to five hours to increase protein synthesis. It's not a huge effect, so it's not a big thing. But let's talk about- It's definitely not going to ruin your metabolism. No, and, but let's talk, about, let's talk about the reality and the pragmatism of this. You're eating one 26 plus 100 calorie meal. That's a, that's a big sitting. Yeah, right so there. how is that going to affect your digestion? Yes. How is that going to affect the food quality? Because- I don't know about you guys, but eating 2,600 plus calories of whole natural foods is really hard. Also, it's show like me, a brick. Also, show me what that's going to look like protein wise. Yeah. To we, hit your protein. So you're hitting your pro Let's assume this person, they're 153 pounds. Let's say they eat 130 grams of protein in that meal. Yeah, yeah. You, you ain't eating 2,600 <laughs> calories unless it's garbage, yeah. hyper palatable yeah. processed right. food, or, or, or if food. it's just, you know, you know how much that is? It's chicken breast. You know what I'm saying? What, do you, what is that? Uh, 43, so you're eating four six ounce chicken breasts yeah. in one city, and then you're throwing in other stuff on top of that. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the, the pragmatism of that is uh, it's it, it's not great. I, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I also think it could encourage a bad relationship to food because let's say you are a, a unique person that can do this, and you eat one twenty six or twenty eight hundred calorie meal uh, with one hundred and twenty grams of protein. You're literally daily restricting and binging because that's a binge, you know, mentality with that volume of food, mm -hmm. and it does kind of encourage that. So pragmatically, behaviorally, I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, that's the stuff it. you have to consider here because technically you're fine. Technically, right. you're not going to ruin your metabolism. Technically, you could get the macronutrients you need in one meal. Right. I have done this before and been okay. So yeah. I just I, I think we you have to always consider uh, long term behaviors around this. And you know, are you promoting the best behaviors? Is it realistic? Like, so you got to you got to you got to weigh all that in. Yeah, I've tried this. Really, it's it's most of the digestion that was the hardest yep. part for for me. And so it's like if you really. Uh, can digest it just fine and you can <laughs> you can do fine with it. I mean, I guess that's an option, but it, it, for most people, I would I would tend to think that they'd have a, an issue with that. It's making its way back around. It's called the OMAD diet, right? So it's making its way back right I, now. I did it. Uh, it was a warrior diet. Yeah, warrior diet. It was, yeah. they call it. No, when it's when it's yeah. a single meal, like just, just call it, yeah, yeah, one meal, one, one, one meal, meal a day. A day well, warrior yeah. does it like at yeah. dinner only. Yeah. yeah. You, you saw, um, um, uh, what's our buddy? Mark Bell, was, I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was promoting it just like a, a, a okay. couple months ago. Um, I don't know if it's still going on or not. So, I mean, the one thing I love about Mark is that he does all these different things and he shares with his audience. And I think that I think that's the, he's honest about his experience. Yeah, I think that's I think I, I appreciate that. I don't think he's pushing one single diet. Um, and, and I think really the, what I think he's trying to show is that there's a lot of different things that you can do. You don't have to follow this one diet. A lot, they all technically work if they're based off of yeah. less calories and you're trying to lean out. So they make sense. But I think that's what you have to really consider is like, how practical is this? Do I enjoy doing, does it work well? And yeah, maybe this is incredible for your lifestyle. Maybe it's very convenient. I just, I just don't understand how the average person can eat over 1,300 calories of whole natural foods at yeah. one sitting and not you, feel- You really have to shovel it in. Not feel terrible, yeah, right? Yeah. Not feel bad. It's too much. You got to digest it all. It's a lot of volume. I mean, I could do it with like shitty food. I could eat over 2,000 calories worth of garbage because it's you know it's engineered to make me want to overeat and I'll feel terrible afterwards. Well, this was the hardest thing yeah. for me as far as maintaining my size. When I hit my peak size of like 235 body fat and like you know 20, 220 something pounds of muscle on me, like that- 
was so incredibly difficult to to keep up the calorie intake that was and yeah. and then and to do it without piling on you know ice cream or burgers and fries like yep. I I had to do that to hit those numbers and you just, to push those limits it's just tough yeah I'm, I, right now I'm I'm averaging about thirty five hundred calories which is a lot for me that's over a thousand calories for breakfast lunch and dinner if I'm only eating three meals yeah imagine doing that one meal it's just yeah. not going to happen next question is from T Cirque. How long should one stick to a workout routine? Oh, that's good. You know what? It depends on the routine, right? If the routine includes phasing and changing of programming and considers that your body needs different stimulus, needs to move in different planes of motion, needs to focus on certain uh, you know, uh, correctional exercises to prevent overuse injuries, well, then the workout routine itself is it's all baked in there. But most of the workout routines that I've seen – probably start to lose their effect or and or cause overuse type injuries and pain at about the three month mark. It's usually what it looks like. If I have all the routines I'm familiar with and I've seen, you look at them like, yeah, after about three months, you're going to start to hit a wall and then maybe it's a good time to I mean, you know, I, I think I would not only agree, but I'd even say that like our MAPS anabolic or aesthetic programs uh, are like that too. Even though we phase it, you could probably get away with doing it longer there's some things that are missing that you would want in your routine. We've talked about this before. I think, or personally, I don't hear what you guys think. Maps performance is the single program that if I, if a client, if someone came to me say, Adam, I can only afford one of your programs, and I want to just run it. Back I'm going to run it, yeah, over and over for an entire year. Which one is the best? And and honestly, it doesn't even matter what your goal is. It could be building muscle, burning body fat, just being healthy. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your goal is. If you were, if you asked me, if the one single program that you were going to run over continuously in in a year's time or two years, maps performance because of what you said of like, it, you know, a lot of programs are limiting some things that eventually you're, if you're not like maps in a ball, it it's in the sagittal plane. Totally. And mm -hmm. you're, you're no and, lateral movement, very little rotation. Yes. You're going to get, start to notice aches and pains in your joints. Great. You know, muscle builder for a three month period. Yeah. Maps performance is you, you use all planes of motion. Mobility is very important. There's a strength component. There's a you know a, a component of speed in there. There's, endurance, you know, endurance. Yeah, it's the most balanced, I would say. And you could definitely run it indefinitely. In the short term, is it going to build as much muscle and strength as some of our other programs? No. In the long term, though, it'll win because exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Well, it's always the one too to to throw in there to interrupt that because right. you know most most uh, programs are structured that way, very heavy in the sagittal plane and very much you know, repeating the same type of stress like over and over and over again, right? And so to interrupt that, you know, helps to kind of create that longevity within, you know, you achieving uh, where you want to get, but then like continuing that progress. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. I mean, and of course the best, you know, uh, combination is just to go through different programs, complete one, do another one. Yeah, that would be, I mean, obviously yeah. that's the way we wrote them with that intention is to is to to cycle through all of them and get the, the benefits from it and you'll get the most benefits. But if I had to, you know, all, I can only yeah, give you one. Indefinitely Yeah, you indefinitely won. one program. Even in the irony that, right, that's not even, that's my, one of my least favorite of all of our programs, but I know it's one of the most beneficial. Yeah. That if I, if I had to stick to one forever, that would be the smartest one. The too. irony is that the, the one program that most viewers and listeners would probably get the most gains and results out of only, only because I know most of them are like drawn to bodybuilder style yeah, math right. programs yeah. is going to be mass performance. I, I'd say eight out of 10 people watching this right now would do mass <laughs> performance and at the end of it be like, holy cow, yeah. this is totally what I needed. Yeah. So look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin, I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 